Gamer Call Pack. Welcome back to the podcast. You, of course, are now listening to Welcome to Beacon Hill, the Southgate Media Group podcast dedicated to all things Team Wolf over on MTV. I am one of your co captains Blue. And you, as always, Dawn, how you doing? Gotta say that this episode is... Oh, I, uh, let's just say that... I'm never as impressed with this episode as I am with the finale. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. The episodes of Team Wolf are very lackluster a lot of the time. Yeah, it's always a waiting game. As a matter of fact, I titled this The Waiting Game because I feel like it gives more justice to the episode than the actual title. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, I, I, I think that they didn't want the fans to freak out <laughs> more than what they already <laughs> did. So, uh, yeah, for discussion today is episode uh, 519, The Beast of Beacon Hills. Uh, glad we didn't have to say that 17 million times like we did with the Maid of Javadon. Oh, forget that. It's the Demio moment. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is. Seriously? Right. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> Uh, so, I guess we should get to the technical stuff. Uh, who did all this garbage? <laughs> so, I mean, who did all this stuff? <laughs> oh, oh, so we had uh, Tim Andrews, Tim Andrew, who does uh, direct this show quite a bit, and Eric Wallace, who is who has been in the writer's room for quite a while as well. Um, it's really shocking to not see Jeff Davis writing a penultimate episode. <laughs> mm-hmm, that's true. So I was just like, oh, okay, there we go. Um, and I noticed that the ratings went up uh, uh, quite a bit uh, with the viewers. Uh, maybe not the demo, but with the viewers this episode. So that was something nice. Yeah. Well, they thought it was going to be something really exciting because it's titled The Beast of Beacon Hills. And yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's see. What did MTV say uh, should be the synopsis? I guess, with the identity of the beast finally revealed, (laughs) Scott and his friends are in a race against time to stop the Dread Doctors from implementing their final plan, if they had one. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Shout out to all my fairly odd parents (laughs) fans. Um, Let's see, what really happened? Okay. Uh, Mason is abducted by the Dread Doctors. Lydia and Sheriff, for some reason, inexplicable reason, try to persuade Paris to remain in Beacon Hills and help fight the Beast. Uh, Deucalion reveals that he could have escaped from Theo at any time and advises Theo on what to do next. Oh, please let this end badly for Theo, please. Please let it live in badly for Deucalion. <laughs> I definitely I'm, think it will. <laughs> Actually, no. Badly for both. <laughs> Sorry to tell you, he will be in season six, it seems. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Why? Uh, I just loved Tennis, Ugh. I guess. Um, anyway, Theo kills Jasp and absorbs his power, allowing him to wear the Dread Doctor helmet to discern the Beast's identity. Okay, sure. However, he says, I use that in quotation marks, he doesn't see Mason. Scott, Liam, and Theo team up and find Mason at the doctor's lair, but they are concerned, uh, cornered by the doctors. Meanwhile, Malia and Brayden are confronted by the desert wolves for some reason at poor Mama McCall's house getting blown to bits. (laughs) 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 And the desert wolves get past the mountain ash thanks to Tracy. Uh, But Brayden recreates the barrier and traps the desert wolf inside with Malia. Okay. <laughs> like, I didn't get that either. <laughs> um, and Kira returns like, to the... Mm. Yep. And this is another... Hmm. Kira returns to the desert and requests the Skinwalker's help. Uh, the doctors easily overpower Scott, Liam, and Theo. But Mason then naturally, quote-unquote, transforms into the Beast. The Beast kill the doctors before Parrish, Chris, and Gerard arrive and join the fight. To no avail. <laughs> and then the Beast reverts back to its human form... <laughs> But it's Sebastian Valet instead of Mason. Dun, dun, dun. At least the wig okay. was gone. Did we know that? <laughs> At least the wig from the from the flashback episode was gone. That is true. But we already knew that was happening, right? Because they told us in every single episode. 
Yes, but now it's a fight to get Nathan back. And I'm like, why? Everybody kept trying to get him to remember, even though they kept saying if he remembered, he would become the man. So obviously nobody really likes Mason. <laughs> that is my theory, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, I'm thinking that's probably not the theory that most people are going with, but I like that theory. What I don't like is the idea that um, after they have told us what, nine billion times this season that once the man takes over, the teenager will be gone forever. And I'm thinking, let me guess, he's going to be gone for one third of an episode. Um, Try and- the first five minutes. Oh, I just, I don't know. I <laughs> just don't know. Well, before we get into low lights and burning questions and head scratchers, uh, let's talk about the highlights of this episode. <laughs> if there were any. <laughs> there were one. I mean, there always is. And I I liked a good portion of it. I mean, it's just, I'm not into, let's see how long we can wait to see if you know. <laughs> Something's going to happen, and that's how I felt about this. Yeah. However, your procrastination Davis. Yes, except it wasn't him. <laughs> He's the one that plots out the whole season, though. <laughs> like, no, I, make him wait, make him work for it again. You know what? I'm not quite sure why anybody would think watching the characters wait on screen is exciting. <laughs> but oh well. Anyway, good things about this episode. Number one is a quote. <laughs> and of Uh-oh. course, Styles. <laughs> it's Styles. It's got me. I love how Lydia wakes up Styles and he's like, What? What happened? Who's dead? <laughs> that should be the new theme for, you know, Beacon Hills. It's like, dude, it's Beacon Hills. It should be, Who's dead? <laughs> I just thought it was funny. Uh,. Number one thing about this episode, uh, the Dread Doctors actually can speak English and not bug language. Who freaking knew? I have that on there, too. I'm like, wow, I can understand you. What happened? And that's why they had to die. (laughs) Uh, I like, oh, one of my favorite things about this episode is that Unless they want all the socks to be thrown in the world, the steampunk scientists are now dead, and so is Douchey. <laughs> it's a good start. Next up to Kaylin and Gerard, please. But come on, that works. Do you, do you want me to break your heart? No. Two thirds of them are dead. There's only three of them? Jeez. <laughs> really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it feels like eight. <laughs> Yeah, two thirds of them are dead. So. That's okay, as long as most of them are off my screen and Douchey's gone. And please kill Gerard. <laughs> please. I think we're working on it, honestly. <laughs> um, I okay. Don't hate me. Like it's not like I want to see more of the terrible oh French God. accent flashbacks, but there is more to the story. So we might actually figure out what the heck Marcel's deal was without like a terrible flashback. We'll just get some exposition like a quick couple of lines yeah no i'm okay without never without ever knowing i'm good really really good um oh the biggest shock of the night the biggest positive shock of the night kira and scott are together on a bed and it does not turn into a sex scene we are sex scene free in this episode it's like a major miracle (laughs) Oh my god. That's like a de- that that's like negative points for some fans. <laughs> uh hallelujah. Can we keep this trend going, please? Because you know, although you know if you were gonna have sex in, in an episode, this was the one to do it in because nobody did anything all episode, as opposed to those times when you are, I don't know, having a sex scene right when you're supposed to be saving Lydia, having a sex scene when a beast is rampaging through town, you know priorities <laughs> i mean it, 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 it's supposed to be like the end of the world because of the beast and that big mural so i was like smoke them if you got them i guess they didn't have them 
Oh, uh, I was just so happy. I was like, because, oh, I, I had like socks ready to launch. I'm like, Kira and Scott are on a bed and he's going to heal. Oh, great. <laughs> and then it didn't happen. Um, one of my favorite things about this episode had to be uh, how everybody looked at Scott and how Scott took the lead when he woke up and came down to the kitchen. Mm-hmm. And then he also grabbed Corey. Which was awesome. That was very awesome. I was just like, oh my gosh. They remembered Scott could be competent at times. <laughs> well, I like how, I like the look on his face before that, when he's coming down and he's overhearing them all talk and he just looks like a proud papa with his pack. <laughs> oh, it, was, it was cute. Yeah, he's cutie. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Malia speaks for me again when she basically is like if I can't get out of this supernatural cage I'm going to kill someone <laughs> I felt the same way about the whole episode if nothing happens in this episode I'm just going to kill someone <laughs> um, I want to shout out uh, History Dad and Kira's little moment uh, mm-hmm. we don't get a, enough of that da- daughter father time and I'm glad that they took mm-hmm. the time out in this episode to show that even though it was bad advice we don't keep secrets from Mama Fox because Mama Fox is a nope. 900 year old Kitsune who knows things <laughs> <laughs> and who should by this point have already shared things <sighs> I don't get it how can you still be this stupid about Kitsune when you know your mom has been one for 900 years well, you know, she's Talk tough to each Asian other. mom. You know, she she's going to tell her, no, this is not your fight and things like that. And Kira just doesn't want to hear it, unfortunately. Although she needs to. <laughs> I don't want her to die. Wait, I'd rather her ride off into the sunset to, to Sunnydale or something. Sunnydale, she ain't never leaving that desert again. <laughs> oh. But anyway, I like that they were together there, and I loved what he was, what he said. Not telling her was dangerous too. I'm like, mm-hmm, because you are the one who's going to get it, the bad end of this deal, <laughs> not Kira. Uh, I love that Theo calls out Scott for letting Dakalian go. <laughs> About time someone did. Oh, give smacks all around for that. You and Derek. <laughs> Sometimes Theo can be one of us. <laughs> um, another thing I really enjoyed was the doctor's ultimate, totally sick burn on Theo and his millennial <laughs> selfishness and entitlement. Uh, that's going to be one of my bad ones. Because I'm like, really? Why am I listening to you talk? It's Just a, shut it, up. It was, a meta, it was a meta shout out to the fans from, <laughs> from the writer's room. That wasn't a shout out to the fans. That was, you know. Like, no, you can't have meta- your steric. Now go away. Metaphysically, you know, shooting the fans, maybe. <laughs> Not a shout out. <laughs> Shoot out. <laughs> uh, I like. Um, I thought it was really, really, really funny. And the funniest part of the whole episode is when Styles insists that he should have a gun, and Brandon just looks at him like, "I don't think so." And then when she throws it at him and he drops it, I was laughing the whole way. I'm like, "Oh, that's Styles one of the is things that's that was good for me because it was humor and comedy, but at the same time, it's kind of bad because well, his dad is in law enforcement, and a lot of people who are who have parents in law enforcement are like really taught self defense because things bad things happen to cops and their families. That's true, but is it season two or three or four? I don't know, one of those early ones when Styles asks his dad for a gun and he just pretty much played out blanks goes, uh no. But at this point, Chris should be training everybody. <laughs> oh, I agree with that. I agree one hundred percent with that. I was just happy that if I wasn't going to get any action in this episode, at least I got to laugh. (laughs) Definitely. (laughs) Uh, Let's see. Uh. Hmm. Uh, I I actually like the desert wolf. She's just like, I'm not waiting for a full moon. I'm just going to snatch you. (laughs) She's trying to get the element of surprise, but just ain't working out for poor Marisol (laughs) Nichols. I like that she was just eavesdropping to get the information. And then she gets Tracy in on the action. I'm telling you, 
as much as I'm no fan of Tracy, and I wish that there was more to the Desert Wolf than there seems to be, you know, I have absolutely zero problem with, you know, Tracy becoming Marisol's, or not Marisol, <laughs> Desert Wolf's um, Padawan and training to be an evil villain. Oh, I, I'm, I'm good so with that. Good that. Yeah. I'm totally good with that. <laughs> oh. Um, well, you've already said that, you know, Josh, a.k.a. Douchey, is dead. But mm-hmm. I like that he was like, I ain't doing it. <laughs> Finally, I, mean, his, I, I love that Theo's pack is falling apart, basically. <laughs> and dying oh, yeah. one by one. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, there's some interesting things in there. Um, Let's see. I love how smart Scott, I'm a big fan of smart Scott, tells Liam to listen before rushing into the creepy old building. <laughs> I was like, oh, good call. <laughs> oh. mm, let's see, what else can I talk about? Um, so I guess we got a sneak peek from for a monster for next uh, for next season. The sir, the soldier from the tank, the Nazi soldier. If he's not already dead, yeah. <laughs> you know how we love to drop those in the penultimate episodes. For oh next yeah. Season, so you mean like I don't know, Derek and Argent in a cell for some reason randomly talking about berserkers, and exactly. we're like. <laughs> What the heck? I see you, Team Wolf. I see you. (laughs) Okay. So, Berserkers then. Glad to know that we're talking about something that makes zero sense in this season. Well, no, because also because uh, a lot of people on Reddit have been talking about that new deputy, and they've been calling him a Nazi deputy. (laughs) And I I really feel like he is representing, like, the Aryan youth. And so when they said that, I kind of, like, stood up like, Hmm, he was acting pretty suspicious. I think this all might tie in together. See, I just think of him as Sound of Music. <laughs> He's got the Sound of Music cut. <laughs> like, okay. Yes, I rely. <laughs> exactly. You know what? That's what I'm going to be thinking every time he steps up. He's in the middle of a car crash, and I'm like, twirl, twirl in the mountains. <laughs> that would actually make the episode better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I am a big fan of the ending where Mason actually beasts out. So there's no doubt that he is the beast and we can move on. And that Argent and Parrish together scare off Labat. Yes. Okay. So can we, um, are we? Sure. Okay. Oh, light! <laughs> what the hell? Werewolf, wonky werewolf powers. You can't smell Deucalion? I mean, I know supposedly Alphas can match their scent, but he has been damaged and things like that, so come on. You're killing me. I'm just... I'm just over plot device werewolf powers. <laughs> I mean, I, I added Wolfsbane and Mountain Ash to the Teen Wolf bingo, because it was just like, screw this. <laughs> you know? Is it Mountain Ash in all caps with exclamation points? No, because the bingo square is not that big, or else it would be. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I put it all lump in. Plot device cannon. <laughs> oh, all right. The number one terrible thing about me was summed up in my opening line of my review, which is, and we're waiting, and we're waiting, and no one's doing anything, and we're waiting. Welcome to Teen Wolf, the waiting game. Long on setup, short on delivery. Really, really, the whole episode's filler. <laughs> it's not even fun filler. It's people talking on phones, walking into walls, sitting next to each other, staring, pacing, eating nuts. <laughs> filler. <laughs> oh my God, you touched on one of them. Brayton, enough with the nuts on Mama McCall's table. That is gross. <laughs> I mean, it was good. It was a good plan. It was like a low-key plan that actually worked. So I was happy about that. But, oh, my goodness. I'm like, I just watched Malia Pace, Scott walk around, 
seriously, walked most of the episode. I watched Liam and Hayden run through the woods for no reason. Holding <laughs> hands, watched, no less. Yes. Oh, yes, definitely. I watched Lydia and Styles sit next to each other on a couch, not doing anything. Styles I was sleeping. Styles <laughs> sleeping. I, I, if Styles is sleeping, that is an automatic metaphor that I should be sleeping. Because every time he's sleeping, I want to be too. I'm like, where's his pillow? <laughs> yeah. I watched Sheriff stare at the full moon <laughs> poster, not the real full moon, as if we didn't know that it was going to be a full mo- moon on the finale. I mean, was there ever not a full moon on the finale? Come on. Just in case you're new. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I watched Melissa McCall on the phone watching people go by in the hospital. (laughs) And I watched Argent and Gerard pace in the library. (laughs) Nobody did anything in this episode until the last 10 minutes. I'm like, oh, this is just not good. Yeah, I I hear you. Okay. Mason ate his twin. Really? <laughs> oh, God. And more importantly, that was the fourth moment of exposition. <laughs> it really styles needs it with words with three syllables? Styles? Okay. Okay, that's what I've got. Stupid styles doesn't understand three syllable words. Uh, since when? Really? At what least the heck? I can throb his more. <laughs> Maybe Liam should have been in that moment. <laughs> I don't know. But Styles not understanding basic, you know, words just doesn't doesn't do anything for me. I'll trump that with another person whose skills went completely wasted. Malia is not in the fight with. Desert Wolf and Brayden at all. Instead, she's upstairs. <laughs> Why was this a good plan? I just don't get it. <laughs> like, seriously, Malia, you're a werewolf. Race! You won't get hit. Just go. And if you do get hit, it won't matter anyway, because you'll heal. Go! Oh. Watching Malia cower in the corner was so much fun, let me tell you. Like, no offense to the actors, but this whole uh, Liam and Mason bro TP, Liam's going to get through to Mason is never going to top anything that Scott and Styles have done. Well, so that's- I don't really understand why we're doing this. We could have done something a lot more exciting than this. Well, let's just say that nothing Mason and Liam does is ever going to top them for anything. But yes, we do know as a fact, because he's a super special snowflake, and we know that Parrish, as a fact, because he's a hellfire special snowflake. (laughs) Oh my goodness. And that's on mine too. There will be a way to save Mason, despite 6,000 warnings that he cannot be saved now, and I am willing to bet that it will be Liam and Parrish who get through to him through the beast and pull him out and save Mason because I want him dead. (laughs) Oh, and I'm going to roll my eyes and possibly vomit when it happens. Uh, Okay. Seriously, they wasted Lydia and Sheriff racing to, to get Parrish. Really? <laughs> You're gonna really? Ugh. Eric Wallace, please. <laughs> well, I will will add on to that. After the promise of Parrish being gone, he wasn't even gone one episode. He wasn't even gone three scenes. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Way to build that tension, T-Wolf. All right. Yeah, that ought to be fun. Hmm. Okay. Here's something else that I really, really hated. And we'll go along with that. Lydia is separated from the pack again to go get Parrish. And then she's in a room with Styles talking on the phone. (laughs) Lydia, your new super fantastic powers are just going to waste here. Can't she banshee out on the beast at some point, too? Surely she can be in the same room with it at some point. 
Lydia will save Mason because her banshee scream can get to him on that frequency and basically alpha roar him into submission. Calling it right now. Oh, good. So it's going to be the go game again. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, bring back the white room and everything. Go for it. Yeah, (laughs) I think I still think that Liam is going to have a major part in saving Mason because he just really has to. And quite frankly, I think that after all the build up on Parrish is the only one who can go against the hellhound except for Lydia. I think the three of them together are going to save Mason and he will be free of the demon within because he's not Styles. <laughs> okay, how many times can we have Kira leave Beacon Hills with no payoff? <laughs> Honestly. Yep. <laughs> can I add to that one as well? <laughs> Go ahead. And exactly how many times are we going to have awkward Kira? Seriously, she doesn't know how to talk to her boyfriend yet? Really? That's a plan? She's got the of the the stammers again. The hum and the hum and the stammer. Oh, (laughs) I do not need stammering Kira. I don't need awkward Kira. Seriously, what was the point of that except to make her look stupid? We have enough fans who don't like her and enough hate going on on her, which doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. So... Back the heck off of making her look stupid. Can we please make her competent? Please. Or confident or both. Either one. Both would be awesome. Don't be greedy. It's Teen Wolf. (laughs) At this point, she's going to be sucked in and we're going to have to go rescue her. And then I'm going to be like, seriously, we do not need a damsel in distress on Teen Wolf. (sighs) Oh, wait. And let me add to the other cure thing. They got her another round four? (laughs) <laughs> what does Mo- I want to know what the Chico does for a living because history dad in California ain't making that much money no kidding not to mention he's got sucky insurance so. <laughs> Obvi- if he has sucky health insurance he's probably not rocking the really awesome auto insurance either so oh wait they might have progressive do- <laughs> that's always the commercial that I see in my area <laughs> during Teen Wolf if it's not an AT&T commercial <laughs> oh yeah i'm thinking that after 900 years she's got a nice stash using it Derek style and not peter style it's not locked in a vault somewhere where someone could take it so i oh, don't know um duke hallion blah 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 shut up <coughs> Why does he? Why does he still go here? Can't he get expelled or, or worse killed? I don't even know what's going on. Just kill them all, please. Just, just nuke the place. <laughs> That's it. Supernatural nuke. Go for it. Kill them all. Why would he show Theo how to take power? I don't know. That would he... give him the idea to do it to him because he wants to be an alpha so bad. I think Ducalion is pretty much still the psycho who thinks that he is the most powerful creature in the world, and um, I'm guessing he's not real threatened by Theo. Nobody is, apparently. Yeah, it's getting a little strange. Like, okay, back off or kill him. I don't care. Either one. (sighs) All right. Uh, (laughs) Ah, okay. So I just got done tweeting about how awesome smart Scott is by not letting Liam go into the, you know, creepy house without, you know, excuse me, I got to blow my nose again. (laughs) All right. Sorry about that. So I just got done talking about how, you know, Scott was smart to not let Liam go into the house without, you know, using his werewolf senses to figure things out. And then like the very next scene, stupid Scott comes out. Seriously, the boy has a hose running from his neck. So your thought is, let's pull it out of his neck. Um, how about using those claws to just cut the hose part and get Mason out of there and then go figure out how to get it out with, I don't know, maybe someone like Deaton, who's a vet. 
who actually could be useful in this situation. <laughs> exactly. I was like, really? What is wrong with you? So and then, not 10 seconds after they don't cut the hose, and I looked because I was like, well, maybe it's all a metal pipe and he's thinking he can't go or there's some supernatural thing on it. But no, there is actually a hose coming out of the metal part, which he should, with his alpha claws, be able to, you know, or slice even through. regular werewolf claws. With scissors, I can do that. <laughs> Does no one have a pocket knife anymore? So. Anyway, and then right after that, Theo runs to the steampunk scientist and hits him in the helmet. And then Liam and then Scott do the same thing. And I'm like, I I can't even. (laughs) Why are you all dumb? (laughs) Seriously, if you're going to go after someone, you don't want the part that is fortified with metal and electricity. (laughs) And magic. Come on. Go for the kneecaps, people. Go for something that's going to work. Go for the hose that's in the back of the helmet. You know, the one one with the cane. (laughs) Yes. You know, the one that you can slice through with those werewolf claws again. Oh, they're driving me nuts. I'm like, really? And then you get that great bong sound when he punches him. And I was like, oh, no. (laughs) I can't. So you mean to tell me that Gerard Mountain Ash Argent doesn't know where the pike is? I call bull puppy. <laughs> yes, but I call score for us because we said last time that they're going to be looking for that freaking pike. So yep. we were right. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it could be a goblin in someone's basement. Oh, shut up. This is not road t- an antique road show. <laughs> I want to know why the Argents don't have their super magical stuff somewhere safe. <laughs> that's that's just what I'm saying. I mean, we have all the guns and safe houses in the world, but I don't know yep. what's in it. <laughs> oh, I mean, we have the freaking magic flower. <laughs> so, oh, we don't. Why is it next it. to that? <laughs> oh, I yeah, I was like, hmm. and the way he's looking around the library, I'm like, seriously, is this going to be another vault under this freaking school? <laughs> What's up with this place? Is it like Fort Knox underneath? <laughs> so it's what the warehouse of things? <laughs> oh, I don't know. All right, I am super, super over Screamer the Stalker. If somebody doesn't short out that invisibility cloak of his, I might end up going through the screen and choking him. <laughs> die, Screamer, die. <laughs> okay. Poor choice of music. And this is my last one, pretty much. Uh, Hidden Citizens, I ran when Kira asked the Skywalker, uh, the Skywalkers, sorry, wrong fandom, <laughs> uh, the Skinwalkers for help. I was just like, really? That's not cool. I was like, I'm pretty sure I know a different version of this also. It's a little peppier. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what's up with Team Wolf or pop music and its entirety right now which takes a peppy classic and turns it into some mournful dirge (laughs) it it could have been worse it it could have been dubstep (laughs) could have been worse it could have been that lords everyone wants to rule the world which may be the most hideous remake ever so (laughs) oh just terrible all right i will add one last one and we kind of already touched on it there is a serious lack of bromance in this episode Serious lack. First off, Scott and Styles are in the same room once. And then another time he closes the door as he's running in. And I was like, oh, can't we just... Ugh. Okay, fine, I give up. You know, this was supposed to be my romance season because you screwed it all the hell last time. So I was really happy making bromance, bromance, bromance. Nada. This is like the third episode in a row with Nada. Jeff, you're killing me. I hear you, man. Ugh. So, let's talk about uh, episode awards. Uh, who, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> this episode is short-circuited in my brain once again. Because uh, okay, I have to go back and find my episode awards. Okay. I'm scrolling, and for some reason, they're on the top instead of the bottom this time. 
Uh oh, hold on, my phone's ringing. All right. <laughs> okay, so who or what was your MVP of this episode? Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to hit it up for Brayden again. Okay. Because every time she's on, she steals the scene. I'm going to give it to the Beast for killing two out of the three Dreadmasters. <laughs> <laughs> and the only reason why we didn't kill all three was convenient plot point is convenient. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, so moving along to uh, who was your favorite character? My favorite character was none of the above. But the most important character was Mason because the entire episode revolved around Mason. So tough because I didn't like anybody really, but I didn't do anything. Yeah, exactly. But I'm I'm actually gonna give it to uh, Desert Wolf. <laughs> okay. At least she's trying to accomplish her goal and not run around like a chicken with her head cut off. <laughs> or more importantly, sitting on a couch waiting for somebody else to figure out what's going on, or sitting on the steps waiting for someone to come around, or. <laughs> Strolling totally. through the woods on a lovely evening with your honey. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for somebody to get something. <laughs> yeah. Or having awkward talks in the locker room. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't. Please don't. Uh, let's see. Um, what was your favorite scene? Ooh. My favorite scene is... I'm going to go with the Desert Wolf Brayden fight. Because it was the only real action on this episode, except for stupid people punching helmets. <laughs> uh, let's see. Mm-hmm. I think my favorite scene is Styles is asleep on the couch, and then Lydia wakes him up, and they're, they're like checking their phones. And then Melissa like arrives, and she's like explaining that Mason... And I was just like, oh my god, like, it annoyed me, but it was, like, all my favorite, pe- almost all my favorite people in one room together, so. <laughs> that worked. Uh, let's see, lines. Now, this is one where I actually had a lot of things, <laughs> because they talked the whole episode, so, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of dialogue in this one. But my favorite is still Styles after being woken up from his nap. What? What happened? Who's dead? <laughs> Um, I think mine is after Malia says, you know, my mom might be trying to kill you too. He's like, okay, that's disconcerting. I should probably have a gun. Because <laughs> that's <laughs> the smartest thing anybody said in a long time, even though it was a joke. <laughs> that's number four for me. Number two, though, is also Styles. <laughs> Styles has all the great lines in this one. Nobody else really has great lines in this. So it's where he goes, Still nothing from Scott and Liam. Lydia, are we sure this is a good idea? Styles, uh, no. No one thinks this is a good idea. <laughs> yup. That yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> um, I, I just have like uh, three words from Parrish and I, I choose to disregard the rest of the line. It's, I can't stay. And then he's like, I'm a hellhound. I have the word hell in my name. Hell. But I just choose to focus on the first three words. I can't stay. <laughs> Well, actually, that's number seven for me, too. Um, Number three for me, Theo. We all want the same thing. We want Mason back. Scott. Yeah, but the difference is we want him back alive. Theo. Well, I'm open to compromise. (laughs) Brutal. (laughs) I was like, oh, Theo never changed. Die, but never changed. (laughs) Um, Do you have anything else? Uh, Yeah. Uh, my favorite character interaction was phone one to phone two to phone three. Because that's pretty much <laughs> the, all the interaction we had. <laughs> oh, God. Um, do you have a favorite? So what was your favorite character interaction? Oh, my favorite character interaction? Ooh, that's tough. I'm going to say 
actually kind of like uh, Dukalian kind of twisting Theo because it's going to blow up in one of their faces and either way it's one less villain for me <laughs> to have to worry about coming back. I'm perfectly fine with that too. <laughs> <laughs> perfectly fine with that. Uh, all right. What was your best moment? Ooh. Ooh. Uh, let's see. Josh, a.k.a. Douchey, dies. That was a good one. Mm-hmm. That was a great one. Uh, Scott being a proud papa at his pack. That was totally awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then just the totally overly melodramatic uh, scene of Melissa watching a, a young black kid be moved <laughs> into the ER because, you know, she's on another, like, she's on another show where <laughs> that's what she does as well. Oh, okay. Uh, Chicago something, right? Yep. Chicago mad, right? Yeah. I don't know. I thought she was on fire at some point, but I really don't know. They're all the it's, same It's to me. like the new SVU. They're all in- intertwined yes. together. And everybody shows up on everybody else's show, so it's like, yeah, you're in the Chicago shows. Yep. You don't know. <sighs> My favorite moment is... When Desert Wolf steps on the shells, and I can finally figure out why Brayden, even why that scene was even in there, <laughs> I was like, "Oh, that makes sense now. Nothing else makes sense, but that makes sense." <laughs> oh yes. So, do you have any special awards? I know you do. Oh, I do. I do. Uh, worst plan. Surprisingly, goes to the steampunk scientists. Unless their plan all along was to create a beast that kills them because for some reason they couldn't commit suicide, this plan really sucked. <laughs> what was the point of this plan? <laughs> I, I just don't get it. Worst employee retainment program. Providing actually decent health care is so first term Obama. In Beacon Hills, the police just slash your tires to keep you from quitting your job. What the heck? What the heck? Worst nickname. So the guy who created the helmet was called the surgeon. Wouldn't the engineer be a better fit? What was that? I don't even get that. Ah, oh, biggest failure. Mo- failure. <laughs> a lot of the steampunk scientists is failure. They're like the biggest hypocrites. You can go ahead and school Theo all you want, but you, your plot line, total failure. Oh. Biggest liar. Parrish, you promised he would go, but wasn't even gone for 10 minutes. Oh, ah. This is not going to hold up in the marathon, is it not? No, it is not. <laughs> Most irritating. What? It's not Gerard. Look at you taking that crown to Kalian. Oh, yeah, you. Most likely to kill you just for the sport of it. Tracy! (laughs) She's kind of like, can I help someone die? Please, please. (laughs) What the heck? She's crazier than Theo. Damn cannibals and their incessant need for masters being up to no good. (laughs) Um, uh, The poor baby award. Mama McCall's house. (laughs) Oh my goodness. And those are my favorite awards. Awesome. So... What did you give this episode as a grade? Three snores out of five. (laughs) (laughs) See, it's right there where most penultimate episodes are. Just, yeah, it was there. (laughs) Uh, D for effort, actual C as in cat, flat C for the grade. (laughs) Yeah. That's pretty much where I'm at, too. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about some other fun stuff, some listener feedback. I know you got some favorite tweeters. I do, but I really slacked off this time. I didn't really look at most people's things. So here we go. So if I missed you, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Clone Poster, who says, what Scott's pack has to deal with? The Beast, the Dread Dockers, Leah's mom, Theo, Decalion. Am I forgetting anything? I'm pretty sure Buffy never had to multitask like that. <laughs> you are right. You are right. Uh, at girl, GRL, behind the sass, and what? What happened? Who's dead? 
that's me every episode of Teen Wolf. Um, <laughs> a Teen Wolf podcast. I liked two of them really a lot. Um, <laughs> one of them said, oh, look, Liam fell down again. <laughs> In the woods, he's me as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then your circle of trust is narrowing, Theo. Wait, Theo had a circle of trust? <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure he had a circle of fear, not anything else. Um, and then at AROF, the hub says, the Dread Doctors move so slowly, it's a wonder they get anywhere. Maybe if they weren't into heavy accessories, they'd be faster. <laughs> like, yep, pretty much it. And those are my favorite tweets of the week. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Who got to the nitty gritty of how I was feeling this week? Uh, definitely did a geek. Like, they just broke it down for us. And I just felt myself nodding my head along with that. I was just like, yep, yep, you're so right. <laughs> Um, Did they call him out on being boring? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> so much. Um, because I've seen a lot of people who are not calling them out at being boring, and that just tells me that, you know, they're not realistic for me. Um, I like the geekery, and I also loved uh, Movie Pilot. Uh, who did Movie co- uh, Pilot? Uh, it's the one by Comic Uno. Uh, I like their reviews. I just got caught up on those. They're pretty good. <laughs> So those are the ones that I totally liked, and uh, you can feel free to Google Schmoogle those, or I'll put them <laughs> in the show notes if I remember. <laughs> Sounds good. I <laughs> uh, also want to shout out uh, TV.com and Prettiest Captain uh, over on Tumblr. Prettiest Captain had like 200, it was like a 200 photo <laughs> recap, a 200 oh, uh, my photo goodness. recap, and every single one of them were freaking hilarious and on point. <laughs> <laughs> oh god it's it's almost over and i'm just like oh this is the penultimate episode and it's still classic team wolf <laughs> well you know in all honesty this is so very very much typical of what's going on so i expected it to be long boring and actually it had less exposition than i expected so i was really pleasantly surprised with that part I, I don't mind the exposition because Team Wolf, I mean, they try it, but they fail miserably at it. But it's just more pieces to the puzzle for when I write my fanfic. <laughs> so okay. They could just pile it on for me. And when the show's <laughs> all over, I can actually figure out a decent timeline <laughs> and how everything works together. <laughs> so, you know. You can figure out the Team Wolf timeline? You must be scouting that genius level, too. <laughs> I'm going to try my very best. I'm going to have my own murder board. I'm, I'm ordering the, gla- the, uh, the seats in the glass. <laughs> it's in about 5 million uh, yards of red string. <laughs> uh, hey, let me guess. Only one ream of green or yellow? <laughs> <laughs> like just a half. <laughs> Picking um, up scraps off of the, you know, the crochet class. <laughs> exactly. Or, you know, wrestling it away from my friend's cat. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna miss Team Wolf, but I can't wait to start uh, re-watching it from the beginning. That's my favorite part when the season ends, and I have stocked up so many gifs and reactions to everything that I just can't wait. Well, I might have to call you up on that because I'm looking at maybe changing the way that I, instead of recapping, doing more of a photo review, and so I've been stockpiling different reactions too. But I'm missing a few key ones. <laughs> <laughs> I probably have them, so no problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am desperate to know what you guys thought of this season, um, what you're looking forward to in season six. Mm-hmm. So um, I want to remind you guys that our email is teamwolf.smgpod at gmail.com. You can also find us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash welcome to Beacon Hills. You can direct message us or just leave a comment on one of our articles. You can tweet to us at Beacon Hills Pod. Uh, you can always leave a rating or, you know, subscribe on one of your fa- on your favorite podcatcher cho- uh, service of choice. Uh, we're on iTunes, Lisbon, SoundCloud, and of course, Stitcher. So uh, <laughs> please do do that. <laughs> <laughs> Not like we're begging or anything, <laughs> but you can reach us at one of 600 places. <laughs> 
<laughs> it doesn't really matter. It's going to be a long um, hiatus for, for Team Wolf this time around. So Yeah. And I'm guessing that means it's not coming back in the summer. I'm pretty sure it's not. I think it's coming back in the fall. Yeah. Because they're still it... shooting right now, so. Right. Right. I don't know. So, I guess it's uh, time for your shameless plugs. <laughs> okay. The best way to get a hold of me is on Twitter. I'm at Dawn1. That's at D-A-H-N-E-1. You can also get me on my blog at Dawn1.blogspot.com. And I'm over there at Spoiler TV, writing things like my column, which usually comes out on Mondays, called Last Week in TV. So if you'd like to talk about more than just Team Wolf, come on over, check it out. You can also nominate an episode that you think I might like, or, you know, one I think I might hate. You think I might hate. That's always fun, too. <laughs> and uh, also, don't forget to check out Red Shirted. That's the podcast on the CW's The 100. So if you watch that show, go Check out Kristen and I as we're talking about what may be the worst season of The 100 to date. <laughs> so, but there are bite sets too. Other than that, don't forget to hit us up at SouthgateMediaGroup.com where you got 60, 70, 80, who knows these days, how many podcasts. There's something there for everyone. Definitely. Uh, as for me, you guys can find me on Twitter at Lil Hellfire. Uh, if you have Tumblr, you can find my URL. It's lilpellfire.tumblr.com. And if you want to check out my writings, lilpellfire.com. So, yeah, that's pretty much it until the actual finale. So, are you doing the agency challenge again this year? Of course. It's so much fun. And it's, it's really easy, too. Like, if you pick something oh, that all you have to do is pick something simple and just, you know, put your thoughts down. Okay. <laughs> uh, I am not doing that because April's hard for me, but I might end up trying to do that over the summer. Hmm. We'll see. I think you'll love it. All right. So thank you so much for joining us for the penult- penultimate episode of Teen Wolf Season 5B, also known as Snoring through it <laughs> now i'm just kidding so anyway thank you so much for joining us like we said before hit us back with some feedback especially if you don't agree because that's always fun too and until next time be sure to get your friends complete medical histories you're gonna need it because dude it's beacon hills If you would like to donate to help pay for this and other Southgate Media Group podcasts, simply go to our website, southgatemediagroup.com, and click on the donate button. It can be as little as a dollar or, well, as much as you want. (laughs) Help keep this fun going by supporting this and our other shows. Thanks again for listening, everyone. You're the best fans in the world.